Well, good morning, Island Church. It is great to see you and to see this place filled today. We had an incredible early morning service. Want to welcome everyone watching online, East Coast, West Coast, Gulf Coast, somewhere across the Midwest, or maybe you're in Foley, or maybe you're in Orange Beach, or Gulf Shores today. We're just glad you're here. I have to smile. I've got two friends uh, that are here in this service. Tony is here. Uh, and Doug, and usually they're watching from the North Georgia mountains and from Atlanta, and uh, it's great to have you all live service. Uh, and God's doing an awesome work in this church, and I'm thankful. If you're new, looking for a home church, um, looking for a church online to attend, I'm glad you came to the Island Church today. God uh, has something good in store for us every week. Amen? Amen. Let me give you, I got a little news and catch up here. Uh, last week, we had our Hope for the World offering. You can still give in the Hope for the World offering. If you go online, uh, you'll see where you can give your tithe. And then it's our Hope for the World. It's our missions. And last week, we uh, received $38,787 for our Hope for the World missions. Can you say praise the Lord for that? Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity, and it helps us to jumpstart in our missions giving, and really it helps us uh, to be able to do something quick um, right now with what even is happening in the Ukraine. As I mentioned to you, Convoy of Hope um, as a first responding um, mission team, compassion ministry uh, here in the United States, but literally around the world, and they have offices in Europe. They've established um, a place in, a, I believe it's nine countries now, to help with the refugee, uh, the Ukrainians that are coming in, uh, to provide for them, to help them uh, in their being displaced. And uh, God knows we need to continue to pray, Amen. In fact, we desperately need to pray. Uh, I think we all recognize sanctions are not going to do anything in the immediate. And if you are anything like I am, and maybe not, but I, it's hard for me to just sit and watch and see destruction and destruction and people being displaced and lives being taken. And God knows I don't want World War III or a nuclear war. But my prayer is, God, let something happen somewhere to help these people that are just being ran over um, by, by this tyrant. We need God's intervention. Amen? And we can't just, we can't just do the, you know, uh, thinking about you, praying for you, and never give it another thought. This is something we need to commit ourselves to. We have opportunities and avenues to give and um, God, let there be peace. Let something take place that uh, an intervention in some way, we need God. The Ukrainians need God. And my heart breaks day after day. I have this conversation daily with myself and with Liz and just saying, we've got to do something. I just feel, I wish I could go. I wish I could do something to help these people, but I know I can pray and I know I can give. I'm going to do everything I can do possibly to help in their plight. Amen? May the church respond. And so continue to pray and uh, ask God to be with these precious folks in this horrific situation that is happening. If you did not receive one of these when you came in, please go by. You perhaps saw the big board, uh, the prayer and fasting board, 40 days of fasting. It's, it's in conjunction with our 40 days of prayer. You can pick these up. And uh, what we've done is we've put together uh, 40 bullet point prayer emphasis so that we as a congregation are... In solidarity, we're praying the same thing. We're believing God for revival in our lives, in our church, in our community, in our, our state, in our nation, in the world. 
uh, asking God for revival. The Bible says this, if my people called by my name will humble themselves. It's not when Washington gets it right. It's, it's not when the UN gets it right or the EU gets it right. It's when God's people, and we're crying out to God for revival, to say, God, there's got to be more. Use us, fill us, work in us, prepare us, because God has something greater for us. Amen. So, as you go through, you'll see things like this. I'll just go from the top. It says, pray for a spirit of reverence. And then it's uh, the fear of the Lord, and then there's a scripture reference. And the next day is pray for a spirit of humility and uh, the willingness uh, to submit. Pray for a spirit of purity, a desire to be clean. Pray for a spirit of purpose. And each one has a scripture reference. Now, that scripture reference is just a, a launching point. It's a simple passage that pertains to the word that day. Don't stop there. We have a wonderful tool available to us. It's called Google. And you can take your phone and you can say, and, and, and just, just say, um, Bible references for reverence. And you'll get a slew of them. And then you can go through and you can read and study. So just use this as a catalyst to jump out. But commit yourself, put forth Listen, we'll provide this, and it's got the basic, but take it and do something more with it and pour yourself into this, and who knows what God might want to do in our lives and in this church as we're praying and believing together. Amen? Then we have this board out front, and I um, uh, appreciate uh, John and Daniel working on that. and It's beautiful. Uh, Michelle and Liz were here yesterday getting things fixed up on it. And so there's little uh, stickers that you can take. You don't need to write your name. Don't write your name on the sticker or on the board. Just take that sticker. They're different colors. The colors don't mean anything. It's just take a sticker and put it on the day that you will fast or the days that you'll fast. And, and what we want to do is have a visual. So when we come in to church over these next weeks that we see that we're covered these 40 days, we're fasting, and we're asking God, we're believing God for breakthrough. That we're saying, God, you be God. I got King's stomach under control. I'm gonna take King's stomach, and you gotta submit. And I'm gonna take that time. Fasting is taking that time that you would eat. Maybe if you can't miss a meal, that you've got some, something physically wrong with you, maybe you're fasting something else that you take the time that you would be doing whatever and you commit that time. You take that time you'd be eating and you read God's word and you pray and you pour yourself into God believing that God wants to do exceeding abundant above all that we could ask or think. The Bible says some kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. The Bible says when you fast, not if you fast, when you fast. When you fast, and we're not, we're not trying to draw attention to ourselves. That's why we're not putting names on there. But we want to cover these days. I love in Isaiah, the Bible talks in Isaiah 58, and it's a fasting chapter, and, and the Bible talks about, paraphrase, who knows if the Lord will turn and relent and leave a blessing. Who knows how God might want to work in your life and in my life as we pray and fast and ask God for revival. Start it in me, God. Start it in me. Start it in us. Let something bigger than us and bigger than our agenda and bigger than our politics and bigger than our pet peeves. God, let something happen in our lives that break us out of our little rut that we are in and do something in our lives. Amen? Oh, I'm asking for it. I'm believing for it. If you, you know, they say the, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect different results. Well, if you want something you don't have, you need to do something you're not doing. 
And we need to pray and fast, seek God, believe that some walls are going to be pushed down, some darkness, some principalities, powers, rulers of, uh, of evil in high places are going to be pushed back and the reign of the Holy Spirit, the reign of revival is going to pour out. Amen? You believe that? Let's stand and let's pray it today. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you cannot lie. Thank you, Lord, that you have promised that when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, that we are filled. That when we draw close to you, you draw close to us. God, I pray that we will take advantage of this moment, this time in history, be a part of this church, to step out together, praying, fasting, believing you for something. God, our kids need to experience you. They've heard about you. They know about you. But they need to have an experience with you that rattles their cage. They'll never be the same. That they know, that they know, that they know that there is a God in heaven. He loves them and he's come to set them free and give them purpose in life. Father, I'm asking today that you would use this time, this sacred assembly that we have set apart to focus on you. Lord, I need, I need you. I recognize this, that our greatest need is to see how much we need you. So many people don't even know how much they need God. Help us to see how much we need you. God, to deal with self and selfishness and covetousness and greed and pride, that, Lord, we would humble, humble ourselves before you. That it's not about a name. It's not about who we are. It's not about lifting ourselves up. It's about you, Jesus. You said, if I be lifted up, may we be a, like a John the Baptist. We're not, we're not looking to draw attention to ourselves. He was a voice crying in the wilderness. God, I'd rather be a voice than a name. God, I pray that you would use us and grow us in this season. Lord, we, uh, we, believe, we believe marriages will be restored. We believe bodies will be healed. We believe provision to be made, relationships to be strengthened. We believe revival, fire to be fresh in our hearts and lives. That our passion will no longer be for this world. That we'll not love the world, the things of this world. That's just pride. But Lord, that our passion, we set our affections on things above and we seek after you. God, I pray it to happen. We love you. We love you and through it all and when it's all over and the miracles take place, to you be all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone would say amen. 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 You may be seated. I, I am so thankful for the opportunity that we have to do something together. Listen, the kingdom of God is God's presence in this world. The kingdom of God is God in us. And it's not someday, but it is now. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. In other words, when the Bible says it's not meat and drink, it's not about things of this world. The kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. That's what we need in our homes. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. That's what we need in the church. That's what we need in our communities. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Oh, we're desperate. We have to. The kingdom of God. So we pray, thy kingdom come. Not my kingdom. Not my kingdom. Thy kingdom. Amen? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Lord, let your kingdom God's kingdom is spiritual, not political or social. It is spiritual. And we are ambassadors for the kingdom of God. May we be righteous. May we be right. May we be the kind of ambassadors that represent the kingdom of God well. Amen and amen. Well, thank you, Lord. I, I look forward. And please stop by. Put a sticker on there. Uh, how many 
days, there's 40 days, you know, it might be good for us to make some sacrifice in this. Uh, we can do more than one. We, there's some significant things that we can do, and there's some significant breakthroughs that we need to have. And so, if there's ever a time our world needed a church that is passionate, on fire, loves God, that, that's risen above religion and layers of religion and denominationalism and all the other junk and just wants to be a representative of God and love God, it's today. And I want to be that church, amen? And if you want to be that, let's do it. Who knows what God might want to do and how he might want to use us? Well, pastor, I'm not as excited as you. And I don't know if this is my flavor. Well, go find your flavor. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Go for God. Amen. God, God, have mercy on us and do something awesome in us. Praise the Lord. We're in James chapter 1 and verse number 8. James chapter 1 and verse number 1 through 8. We started here last week and we're going to jump off right here. And uh, got some things. I believe God has some things for our hearts and lives. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Again, if there's anyone who could have, who could have done a little name dropping, who could have been a little puffed up about, about who he is, it's James. It's like, hey, I'm the brother of Jesus. I'm a leader in this church, I'm somebody. But he didn't. He said, I, I'm just a servant. That's where I go back to John the Baptist. Are you Elijah? Are you a prophet? No, I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. He was the forerunner of Jesus' church. In, in a real way, we are the John the Baptist of this day because we are forerunners of Jesus coming back again. John said, there's one coming greater than I. Let me tell you something. There's one coming, and we're the forerunners of Jesus. Do you get that? Amen. And so, he says, I'm a servant. And then he says to the 12 tribes, much like what we see happening in the Ukraine and throughout Europe, how people are being dispersed all over. That's what had happened. War had taken place. And the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered all over. And so, James is writing to them. Now listen, this is a relevant word. This is right where we live. And it says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Now, what we talked about last week were, were four facts of life. And the facts are these, that trials happen. It's just a part of life. They're, they're not an elective it's a mandatory course that we take at some juncture. Jesus said this. He said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Now, he went on to say, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. But in this world, you're going to have tribulation. We live in a fallen world. Because we live in a fallen world, we live in a broken world. The systems of this world are broken. The political systems are broken. The monetary systems are broken. 
It's a broken world because of the fall of man. Jesus came to redeem us, to save us, but this is not heaven. This is, we're going to go to a utopia. We're headed to heaven. That's a blessed hope. I look forward to heaven. Heaven is reality. Amen. But this is not heaven. You know, Iowa, this is not heaven. We try to make it heaven. We try to create our little heaven. We, in fact, we live in paradise. Our police vehicles say protecting paradise. We live in paradise. We live in what's known as Pleasure Island. We live in a wonderful place. This is not heaven. We're headed to heaven. It's a broken world. And in a broken world, there's trials and there's tribulation. There's sickness. There's disease. Trials happen. Faith does not make us immune. And just because we say, well, I don't, I don't want any trials, and I, 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 I just believe there's no trials. No trials, you stay away from me, trial. You stay away from me. It doesn't work that way. Now, I believe in God's divine protection, and I believe that he intervenes in our lives so many times when we don't even know it. But I understand I'm in this world. And I don't go around confessing, thank you, Jesus, I got tribulation. No, Jesus just said, I want you to be prepared. It rains on the just and the unjust. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And it rained on them both. So, trials happen. How about this? Trials are unpredictable. Man, they just, out of nowhere, things are great. And then all of a sudden, one day everything, sun is shining. The next day, all hell's breaking loose. They're just un- unpredictable. You know, I, I know we all live this life, but, but life as a pastor, anytime my phone rings, it's a potential crisis. And especially when it rings at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's a potential crisis. That's usually when the police department calls me or the fire department calls me, it's unpredictable and it's inconvenient. Because I'm preparing for Sunday. I'm sleeping. And the phone rings. And a crisis has happened. And help is needed. And and I've said to dispatch, I said, now hang with me a second here. I gotta get a pencil and piece of paper. I'm with you, Pastor Fred. Just, I'll give this to you all again. Unpredictable come out of nowhere. Everything's great. And then we get that call or something. Boom. Car veers over. Doctor gives us a call. Our husband, our wife. So trials are unpredictable, inconvenient. They come in all shapes and sizes. We have some that They're speed bumps. They kind of just a distraction. And then some rock our world. Some rock us to the core. Shake us. They come in all shapes and sizes. Here's what I found out. Is that trials have purpose. See, trials help me in my faith. Trials test my faith. When, when, my, uh, when, my, when my truck's full of gas, which that's a whole nother story if you want to talk about gas for a moment. It's a 37-gallon tank. And I don't let it get much off the full mark before I'm back at the station just keeping her filled up. I know it's the same amount of gas, but boy, it helps when it's in those smaller chunks. But... When the truck's full of gas and it's all clean and waxed and shining, and when, uh, when I got a little starch in my shirt and a little jingle in my pocket, I don't, I don't really need a lot of faith at that time. I'm doing pretty good. I'm feeling good. 
But when it's dark, and when that unexpected, unpredictable, inconvenient trial comes, my faith is tested. And am I going to trust God? Am I going to hang on to the promise of God, or am I going to throw my hands up and say, you know what? I quit. Why me? Why this? Why try? God, what'd you let this happen for? It tests, it tests me. James 1.3 says, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. See, trials cultivate steadfastness. That, that crowbar for a backbone, that perseverance, that stand strong. I'm going to be steadfast, unmovable. I'm going to keep trusting God. I'm not giving in. I'm not quitting. I'm not going to throw my hands up. No, my faith gets tested. And then the steadfastness produces steadfastness, strength to stand. What we're talking about is character. Character. James 1, 4, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. What's that mean? It means that you're mature. Perfect and complete, lacking nothing, means that you are becoming mature. You're growing, becoming more like him. And isn't that the objective of life? Are you more like Jesus today than you were yesterday? Not even a year ago. Are you more like Jesus today than yesterday? Have you made any stride, any step? Are you doing anything to, I'm growing 1%. I'm a better, another percent. I'm better. I'm getting more like him. I'm trusting him. I'm more faithful. I'm faithful in my giving. I'm faithful in my praying. I'm faithful. I'm faithful in my fasting. I'm faithful in church. Am I growing? Am I following, pursuing Is there, is there character that's being developed in me? We all, you've heard me say this a thousand times. Reputation is what others think about you. And reputation's important. We want to have a good reputation. But rep, reputation does not mean you're going to make the right decisions. Character, that's where we make the right decisions. It's in character that, that we're the same person privately that we are publicly that the things that we that we say we stand for and believe that when we're by ourselves we still stand for and we believe and we live them out if people are looking or if people are not looking that I'm going to trust God and I'm going to say praise the Lord when I'm at church and when I get home I'm not going to throw my hands up and just give in give up I'm going to keep trusting God character I'm growing. I'm becoming more like him. I'm, I'm maturing in my faith. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. So, all kinds of trials and tribulation. Now, let's jump into this. Here's what I want to get across to us today. The Bible, and in the same context here, well, I'm not taking... I'm not taking something out of, I'm not taking a verse over here and 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 trying to, trying to back up a, a, a point or a belief that I want to communicate to you. I'm taking scripture in context. I'm taking, I'm taking a text within its context. So there's some power in this. This is the way, this is the way this came together for this purpose to communicate. And, and there's some incredible, incredible principles here. Um, there's some incredible steps to be taken. Now, I preach in points, and I, I do that. I'm a bullet point type person. It helps me to remember. I think it helps people to remember. The, the downside of that is, is that you'll take what I'm saying this morning and you'll just make it a formula. God never reduces himself to formulas, okay? This is all out of relationship with the Lord. 
It's out of following him. It's, it's, it's in context and it's principles and it's steps. So it's not just, well, I can do whatever I want and I got this formula and I apply this formula and poof, everything's okay. No, there's, there's, some, there's some real meat to this. There's some substance uh, to all of this. I, um, I share with my staff and I, I talk to them and, and we, have, we have culture that we talk about and, and there's foundations that we have set in place. There's systems that we have. I, I worked on a, on a teaching last week and I'll give it to my staff in the morning and the, and the essence of it is this, is that there's no secret to success. There's no secret to success. Success is systematic systems being lived out, right systems, righteous systems, godly systems. We have eight systems in this church that we operate off of. We have for 11 years. And those systems, and we've seen, we've seen God grow us, and we've seen things happen, but behind the scenes, there's these systems we're preparing ourselves. We know that all the growth and all the good things, it's the grace of God. We're just doing the best to prepare ourselves to facilitate what God wants to do. So there's no just like secret. No, there's a commitment to the system. There's a commitment to the principles. There's a commitment to... In, a, in this case, to the word of God. Amen? So here's what the Bible says. Here is how you face trials. Everybody still with me? Everybody glad you came to church? All right. We'll go through these real quick. And then we're going to have communion. And as we go through communion, we're going to pray for miracles. And we are believe that God is going to do some special things in this place today. Amen. So here's the first thing. How, how to handle your trials? Well, number one is this, rejoice. Okay, I didn't get one amen on that, but let me, let me start over. Rejoice. It, it, it is an amen point because it's the foundation of how God operates. Rejoice. James says this in in. In verse number two, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet various kinds of trials. Another translation reads this, consider it pure joy when you face trials. Now, don't misunderstand me. He's not saying fake it. God's not asking you to fake it. And this whole idea of fake it till you make it, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a fake it till you make it guy. I used to be. When I was younger, man, I wanted to have the appearance of success. And so every mission strip I ever went on, man, I bought a fake Rolex and wore that. I got a drawer full of them. I settled in on a Seiko. How about that? This isn't a fake it till you make it type of thing. It's not put on a plastic smile. It's not pretend. It's not some Pollyanna deny reality. And it's not this, oh, good, I get to suffer. I just love to suffer. I feel so spiritual when I suffer. No, that's, that's not it. We don't thank God for the situation. We thank him in the situation. Here's what the Bible says, First Thessalonians. And, and get this, it's probably one of the most misunderstood verses in, in the Bible. It says this in First Thessalonians 5.18, it says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. That, that's not saying, God, I thank you I'm sick. God, I thank you I broke my leg. God, I thank you I'm going through trial. God, I thank you I don't have rent money. I thank you, God, that I'm broke. I thank you I got fired. That's ridiculous. Hello? 
you get tired of me saying this, but I'll tell you one more time. If you're doing that, just stand up right now. Come on down here, and we'll just slap stupid out of you. That is absolutely ridiculous. I don't thank him for all the stuff I'm going through. What I do, I thank him that he's God. And in the midst of my problem, he's bigger than my problem. Amen? Count it all joy. Count it all joy in everything. Not for everything. In everything give thanks. Not for everything. What makes the difference? What makes the difference? It's this. Count it all joy. You know what makes the difference? Is your attitude. It's your attitude. You can be deliberate, you can evaluate, you can make your mind up, but it's about having the right attitude. I can't control the circumstances, but I can control how I'm going to respond. And the Bible tells me how to respond. Count it all joy. God, I thank you that you're with me in this and that you're going to see me through this. Amen? Victor Frankel, the Jewish psychologist who spent time in a Nazi concentration camp in Germany said this, they stripped me naked, they took everything, my wedding ring, my watch, and there I stood naked. And all of a sudden I realized at that moment they can take everything from me, my wife, my family, my possessions, but they can't take my freedom to choose how I'm going to respond. See, you get to choose. You get to choose. How are you going to respond? To respond? Psalm 34.1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will. I choose. I get the opportunity to choose. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and, and, and all that is within me, bless the Lord, and I don't forget your benefits because you heal all my diseases. You forgive all of my iniquities. I bless your holy name. Amen? What was he doing? He was speaking to himself. He was encouraging himself. Bless the Lord on my soul. He was speaking to his soul, his spirit. Bless the Lord. Come on now. Bless the Lord. Some of you need to talk to yourself. You need to talk to your spirit and say, come on now. Trust God. Come on now. Keep praising God. Don't give in. Don't throw your hands up. Don't quit. Don't get down. God is a way maker. He's going to see me through it. That's exactly what David, oh, that's radical. Yeah, that's radical. And you better learn to do it if you're going to have victory in your life. I will bless the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So I, so I rejoice. I can't help but think of last Sunday. And I think many of you are aware of this. Matt, Pastor Matt, Matt and Paige, they were blessed with a baby this week. Uh, Sam is adopted, and now they uh, are adopting baby Olivia, Liv. And last Friday, a phone call was made. Here's a baby, it came out of the blue. They go to the hospital, spend the night. This is, this is, this is your baby. The next day, no, it's not your baby. The decision's been made. And thought, well, that, and, and they'd gone through this for a long period. With Sam, it, there was a baby available, then not a baby available. There was a pink nursery, then a blue nursery, then a pink nursery, then a blue nursery. And it was a long, brutal process. They walked through and trust God through. And that, when it first happened, I thought, oh, no. Man, here's a, looks like here we go again. We walked into church last Sunday, and we're singing, he won't. 
And I knew what Paige was going through, that she'd held the baby, then she'd given the baby back. And there was no expectation that baby was coming back again. And we're singing, he won't, he won't. And that girl stood up here, and she's declaring, he won't let me down. I don't know if you were here, you saw her. She sang it with all of her might, and she twirled. She went around in circles saying, you won't, you won't. You might think that's crazy, that's wild, that's radical. But she was claiming and praising and rejoicing in God. Amen? I thought, listen, if the, if the baby hadn't come about, that girl showed me something that day. Trust God whenever your heart's broken, no matter what. Come Monday, we get another phone call, and we got a baby. Thank you, Jesus, and that baby's in church today. Amen. Oh, wait till you see her. She's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. You know, we're so fickle. We're up and down. Let's make a decision. God, I love you. I'm going to serve you. Things didn't go right, but I'm going to keep loving you, and I'm going to keep serving you. And and you can change. You can change people's minds. You can change hearts. You You put kings in places. You take kings out of. You do whatever. You are God. And I'm trusting a sovereign God. Amen? How do you handle How do you handle your trials? Well, secondly, you pray. You pray. And isn't it interesting? And again, this is all within context. Here's the prayer. James 1, 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. We pray, and in light of our trials, in light of count it all joy when you fall into all these trials, in light of that, pray for wisdom. If there's ever a time we need wisdom, it's, it's, it's when our emotions are being pulled in every direction. Stress, emotions up and down, disappointment, things said, anger, the kaleidoscope of emotions we walk through in disappointment. So what do I need? What do I need when my emotions, I need wisdom. Wisdom to make the right decisions. Wisdom to know what to say, what not to say. When to step and when not to step. That's, that's where this is really, that's what this is promised for. It's to help me in the midst of trials. Whenever I've been blindsided, had the air knocked out of me, I can't breathe. God, give me wisdom. I want to do this right. I need your wisdom. I need to do this in a way that honors you, that brings you glory, honor, and praise. Now, should we pray for wisdom to be a kind of husband or wife, to be the kind of employee or employer? Do we need wisdom in every day of life? Sure we do. And you can pray that, and I think it's wonderful, and you can stand on the verse. But understand, the the, the context of the verse is when we're walking through trials and troubles and tribulations and emotions are high, God, give me wisdom. I don't want to... I don't want to shut the door on something that you're doing. I don't want to give up too soon. I, uh, I want to keep trusting you. God, give me wisdom. Let wisdom supersede my emotions. Most people are led by their feelings. And we need to be led by the word of God. God, give me wisdom to follow your word. Solomon, the wisest man, read the book of Proverbs. Wisdom important? Absolutely. So God, give me wisdom, wisdom. There's no situation in life that you cannot learn from if you have the right attitude. If you have the right attitude. The problem is we ask the wrong question. We ask why. Why, God? Why did he do this? Why did she do that? God, why did you let this happen to my wife? Why did you let this happen to my, why did you let this happen to my baby? 
Why, God? You could have, you could have kept this from, why? The question is not why. Because we, we won't know why. In this world, we, we won't know till the world to come. And I, I've often thought of this. You know, by the time I get to heaven, the why is not going to be as near as important as it is right now. We may never know why. The question to ask is what and how? What do you want me to do? And how do you want me to do it? What do you want me to do? And how to do it? That's, that's maturity. That's mature faith. That's following this biblical, this biblical pattern, this context. I rejoice and I pray for wisdom. And, and so, God, how do I walk through this? I want to honor you. I want to do this in a way, the way you would. I want to walk through this the way you walk through, would want to walk through it. And so, it's not why, but it's what and it's how. And then, then the last thing is this, is faith, is faith. James 1, 6 through 8 says this, but let him ask in faith, no doubting. Do you know, do you know it takes the same energy to have faith as it does to doubt? That doubt is faith in reverse, reverse. So either you're going to believe or you're going to doubt. Either you're going to have faith or you're going to doubt. And he says this, if you, want, if you want to walk through this, you've got these trials. You rejoice and you pray for wisdom. And then, and then you do this in faith. I, I choose to trust God's word. I choose to trust God above my circumstance. No doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that's driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose he'll receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say that's all the church, but that's way too many. Way too many. Are, are tossed to and fro. Come to church, praise God, bless God, lift their hands, shout hallelujah. Woo, dance. Come on. But let crisis happen. Why me? Why me, Lord? Quit, moan, bellyache, complain. And I understand real life. But understand, either this thing works or it doesn't. There's a way to walk through it. So, so we ask in faith, God, I thank you. I thank you. You cannot lie. Your word is real. Your word is truth. I choose to trust your word above my circumstance. I choose to trust the truth over the facts. The facts are this crisis is happening. But the truth is, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God's for me. God's with me. He are my healer, my deliverer, my strength. You're the one who causes me to triumph. You're the glory and lifter of my head. See? Amen. That's the way we walk through this. I'm trusting your word. And I keep standing on it. I keep standing on it. And I keep standing on it. Think about this. The children of Israel were promised. They were promised the promised land. It was the promised land, right? So, suppose it to be like this. Every week they go to church and they heard, we've got a promised land. God's promise. God's promises. God's promises. God's promises. God's promises. God's promises. They knew how God had got them out of Egypt. They saw the miraculous take place through all the plagues. They saw the Red Sea open. God provided manna. He provided a pillar of fire. He provided 
everything they needed along the way. And then when they get to that place and we're going to send these 12 spies out, go spy out the land. This is the promised land. And they go spy out the land and, tw and 10 of them come back and go, oh, we can never do it. It can't happen. We're like grasshoppers. We're just, we're nothing. Their whole life they'd heard about a promised land. And then when it came time, we can't do it. Ten of them, two of them came back and believed God and, and, and got it. But ten, no. And I don't mean for this to come across harsh, but listen to me. Listen to me. How many in modern day church sat in seats our church, across this community, across America, and hear the promises of God. They're yes and amen. God cannot lie. Hear the promises, 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 hear the promises. Stand on the promise. Stay true to the promise. But let a crisis, let a trial happen, and it's like, oh, I can't do this. I quit. I ain't going back. God, why? God, why? Why me? God, why? I can't believe this. Man, I've done everything right my whole life. I've been a good person. I tithe, I worship, I was faithful to church. Why, God, why? And all the time, God had promised, 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 promised that he would walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death, that no matter what we face, we're never by ourselves. He's always with us. Happens all the time. I don't know that we're any different than the children of Israel. We hear the message but when crisis takes place. So this is just a preparation. This is to help us because trials are coming. Difficult times happen. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to rejoice. I thank you, God. You're bigger than my trial. I thank you, God. You're bigger than my pain. My faith is in you. Lord, I trust you. So help me. Give me wisdom to do this right. I love you. My faith is in you. Amen. Yeah. That's how. We walk through it. Can you say amen to God's word today? Amen. amen. Liz, join me, would you please? We cooperate. Cooperate with his purpose. Cooperate with his purpose. Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone in this room today, you, you've been here and... There's been something sung or something said. God's tugged at your heart and you know that you need to surrender your life to Jesus. And you sense that knock. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Is he knocking at your heart? Is he tugging at your heart? You just lift your hand to say, pray for me, pastor. I need to surrender my life, give my life to the Lord or back to the Lord. Thank you and thank you. Are there are others in this room. Thank you. Others, just lift it up high, right back down. I want to pray for you. Thank you. I see you. Anyone else? A few more seconds. Anyone else? Right over here. Thank you. I see you. Look up this way. We all understand that God keeps his word, right? And God operates according to his word. And his word says, if I confess with my mouth, the Lord, Lord in charge, Jesus, my Savior. If I confess, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. Say, I believe in resurrection power. I'm so glad that we're not Chris, Christians by, Christ followers by a, osmosis. We just kind of evolve. We're not saved, saved or saved us. But there's that moment when we cry out to the Lord. And he said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be. Be what? Saved. saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I was thinking about this. <clears throat> I don't know what your theology is about the thief on the cross. I'm thankful that Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't have a chance to get baptized, did he? 
but he cried out to the Lord. My grandpa got saved on what they call a deathbed salvation. I've heard my dad preach it. He was so glad, so thankful that his dad in that moment received Christ. But I just want to say there's so much more to life and you can't count on a last minute right before you slip into eternity, slide into home. You can't count on, on having that opportunity to say, oh, Jesus saved me. Jesus came to give us life and life to the full today. And he wants to give us life this morning. Amen? So today is the day of salvation. This is it. So if you lifted your hand or you didn't, I'm going to ask us all across this room, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for not giving up on me, for loving me, for dying on a cross. I thank you that you're my Savior, you're my Lord. I thank you that by the power of God you rose from the dead. That this is a powerful moment that my life is transformed from darkness to light. Thank you for saving me. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your strength to live, to live victorious, to live, to trust you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. If you pray with us, please. Call the number. You see it on the screen. Let us know. I got seven principles I want to send you that will help you in your next steps. Can't send it to you if you don't text. God's omniscient. He knows everything. I don't. So you have to text. So I know, all right? But if you let us know, we want to give that to you. Stand with me. We serve open communion here at the Island Church, which means you don't need to be a member of the church, but we ask that you be a member of the body of Christ. Communion, communion does this. Communion is an act of obedience. Our ushers are making their way back through. If you don't have an emblem or have the, the cup and the bread, they'll get your attention. Get their attention, they'll give you one. It's an act of obedience. Jesus said, as often as you do this, you're remembering me. You're remembering what I did. We obey and we remember him. And then this is covenant relationship. It's a reminder of covenant relationship built on love and trust. And when, when we do our part, we are, we've already been given the assurance, he always does his part. Amen. I love that. Now, let me ask you this. How many are in the middle of a trial today? You're in a situation. You need a miracle from God this morning. And you, you're, you're, you're taking this word and you're going to apply it. Amen? You just lift your hand. Because these emblems speak of miraculous. I, ha I need a miracle in my life. I'm trusting God. Hold your hand up high. That's you today. Father, you see hands lifted. God, you know each heart, each person, each need. You're mindful. You know what weighs upon them. Lord, what is causing them to have sleepless nights that's creating pain and discomfort. It's affected their body, relationship, the finance. God, you know each person in this place. And Lord, this word is for each person in this place. And I thank you that we have provision in you. So as we hold these elements, it's a vivid reminder. We are trusting you, Jesus. You are the answer. You are the answer. I trust you. I, de I declare my dependence. I give you my praise. My faith and my hope is in you. Lord, I thank you for this bread that represents your body broken. 
that you suffered on a cross and you took in your body on the cross stripes and pain, a crown of thorns on your head. I thank you today for peace in our minds. I thank you for healing for our bodies. I thank you that by your stripes we were and we are healed. Lord, we offer thanks to you because you have provided greatly for us Thank you, Lord Jesus. We do this in remembrance, and we do this in expectation. Thank you, God, for your touch in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of the bread together. Jesus said, this is the new covenant in my blood. This is all about covenant relationship. Liz and my relationship is built on love and trust. It's not a contract. It's not a contract. Liz and I don't have a business proposition here. If as long as we stay together, we got a ministry. It's not a business. It's a covenant relationship. What we have with God is not a contract or something that just helps me out. It's a rent God out, pure, conscious, better way of life. It's a, it's a covenant relationship of love and trust. I love you, Lord. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandment. If you love me, you'll love and trust me. I love and trust you. Let's do this together, covenant relationship. Amen? So, Lord, thank you. You did for me what I couldn't do for myself. Thank you that you loved me. And that whenever I broke that trust, when I was unfaithful to you, you kept loving me. And I thank you that you restore love and trust. And that, Lord, we walk in, we walk in one together. I thank you. I thank you, the promises of God, yes and amen. Lord, there's, there's, there's some hurting folks here today. There's some hurting marriages. There's broken bodies. There's finances. There's lost children. There's wayward situations. There's just some difficult days. God, I thank you that you are the answer to everything. It's in you, Jesus, your blood, your covenant. You are the answer. So we're looking unto Jesus this day. And Lord, we remember you and we are thankful to you. I pray it all in Christ's name. And everyone would say amen. Let's partake of the cup together. Amen. Now let's practice. Let's practice rejoicing a little bit here. Let's worship the Lord. Come on, church. Lord, I bless you. I praise you. I thank you for who you are. I rejoice in you. I thank you that you're over every situation. Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord over the, even the difficulty, even the struggle, the trials, the hardships of life. Over these moments that I'm growing and walking through, I worship you because you are going to see me through. You are faithful. I bless your name. I honor, worship, and magnify you, Lord. I pray for wisdom to walk through things, wisdom to walk through these days. Cry out to God, wisdom for my trials, wisdom to say the right thing, know what to say, when to say it, when not to say it. God, give me wisdom, and Lord, my faith. I will not waver. I put my faith in you. Come hell or high water, I've nailed my foot to the ship, and I'm with you. I'm committed to you. My my faith is in your word. I trust you today, Lord. You are good. I bless you. And it's in the authority of your name we pray. The authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, look, look I know I got to close. Listen to this real good. When I was growing up, my sister, my sister, she's mean as a snake. And she got me in more whoopings than, I've, than anyone could ever imagine. Um, and, and, and there was times she'd say to me, Freddie, stop it. 
And I'd look at her and I ain't stopping, whatever. I'm going to do everything I can to bug her. But then there was other times she'd say, Freddie, Dad said for you. And when Dad said it, guess what? I stopped. Well, see, that authority. She said, Dad said this. When I pray in Jesus' name, I'm praying in the authority of Jesus' name. So when I say in Jesus' name, Satan has to stop. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. In Jesus' name. We're praying in the authority. Amen? In Jesus' name. So let's declare this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for being. Sign up for the prayer and fasting. Thanks for being at the Island Church. We're so glad you joined us today for Worship and Word. If you prayed with us to commit your life to Christ or you want to know more, text the word NEXT to 251-244-2030. We want to celebrate with you and help you in what comes next. Don't forget to click CONNECT on our website if you're new. And to join us in giving, you can text Island Give to 77977 or visit the islandchurch.tv slash give. We pray you have an awesome week.